Welcome back. You're watching Hong Kong Direct. We're counting down towards Saturday afternoon racing at Sha Tin. And for a preview of the best of the action across the 10 race card, an in-depth analysis of the two feature events, go to the Hong Kong Jockey Club website, the audio and video section, and you'll find Racing to Win with the new format. But if you would also like a preview of each and every race across the 10 or 11 races, depending on the program, you'll get that through the website as well too with Andrew Lejeune and the boys there so it's all there for you on the HKJC website before we look ahead to Saturday though let's look back to last Sunday the best of the action was the group three Queen Mother Memorial Cup for the stays here's how the concluding stages unfolded Altham has snuck up right in behind them from Panfield, Butterfield and Ho Ho Khan. It is reliable team at the 300 metre mark. He still leads by three quarters. Charity fun. Packing Waltham now can't get out. Butterfield surging. Then Panfield from Russian Emperor. It's charity fun. Reliable team and Butterfield. Three way go on the Queen Mother. Charity fun. Butterfield. Reliable team. Great finish. Charity fun. Butterfield drives. Yes. Butterfield beat charity fun and reliable team. To Terrific three-way finish. I do think it's a chance because only four horses uh, got a good chance in this race. What I think is number two, four, uh, number ten, and number six as well. Yeah. What were your thoughts watching the race? I asked the Matthew to jump, put him on the fence, just like the two races before, set roll him. He's still on the fence. He's, locked, he's still poor a little bit, but you can hold him. You got to cover, and he can finish. And coming here today, did you think that the 2,400 metres would suit him, this distance? Uh, in according to his um, um, overseas record, he should be OK. Yeah, should be handled. And runner-up, Charity Fun. This has been his first season here in Hong Kong. What did you think of his performance oh, he, today? He's done a great job. He, he's healthy. He's happy. Only the last 100 metres, the last 50, 80, 80 metres. I think the, the, the ring, the jockey's ring a little bit too loose. If he can turn on his mouth, maybe very, very competitive. If love is very competitive, maybe he can win, or maybe, I don't know. So a one, two in the race here. In three weeks' time, we've got the group one over this distance. Will both of your horses head there? I, I need to talk to the owner. Uh, for sure, but if you, yes. And also, uh, Charlie Fun's owner want to run on that race. But I need to see how they pull up, and they see who's the jockey. Because um, Matthew just told me, he ride Francis Lewis horse. Maybe he got. You have to ride a Francis Lewis horse. Yeah. A stable Quinella there for Danny Shum, who's enjoying an excellent season. Butterfield's been a really honest horse. He deserved to win a good race like that. Well, Charity Fun does look like a nice, promising stay for the future. This is just his first season of racing here in Hong Kong. From Sunday, let's move along to what happened on the Tuesday Barrier Trials. Sky Darcy, the derby winner, was back in action. And there's a couple of other horses from the trials that I think are worth paying attention to, and they feature in this week's Trial File. One thousand metres, Sky Darcy and Barrier number five. They're ready. They're off and racing, and uh, they came away in a good line from the one thousand metre dispatch point. Hinch and Love was one of the first away with California Deep Shot and Royal Pride right there as to his winner method over on the uh, outside rail. Then came behind those runners as someone lost a plate there. Not usual talent. Sky Darcy and the last of them is Ping Hai Bravo. Inside the 400 metres. Winner method, the unbeaten son here of Deep Field. He shows out a length from California Deep Shot. Two and a half to three back to Hinch and Love. Followed there by not usual talent. Sky Darcy making good inroads between those two runners. But it's winner method in front. Going strongly here for Zach Purton. And winner method is going to be California Deep Shot. Margin half a length on the line. Sky Darcy, I think, just third from Hinch in love. He was fine. He, he just, just went out to give him a piece of exercise among horses. He jumped brilliantly as usual, relaxed nicely, and he came through to the field of like traveling on the bridle. So we actually went out there just to get him to do some exercise, not to really test him, and he's done it very well. Has he felt coming out of the derby? Has Casper given him a bit of break and a bit of time since that run? Apparently he did, and I think that's what he deserves anyway because the horse has done an amazing job throughout of the season. He, he won multiple races, including, including the derby, and Casper uh, giving him a break, I think that was a well-deserved uh, thing for the horse. 1,000 metres. 
Off now and trialling. A little bit awkward from the start was the multiplier. I think he got involved in a skirmish with the golden scenery. Got the shuffle up and went back to last. First away was Joyful Fortune. He leads out over Perfect Glory. Diamond Diesel third and Viva Hunter fourth, followed by Naboo Attack and Super Dobbin. 2.20 left to go. Joyful Fortune in front, leading a length or so on Perfect Glory. Naboo attacks under a hold behind them from Super Dobbin, and then came Viva Hunter, but it's Joyful Fortune for Matthew Poon. Goes on to win it nicely. Second, Naboo attack. He trialled well, and then came Perfect Glory, Super Dobbin. Viva Hunter came next. The Golden Scenery, the Multiplier, Diamond Diesel, and Perfect Mary Noel was tailed off last. It appears that the next assignment for the Derby winner, Sky Darcy, will be the Group 3 Lion Rock Trophy at the end of May. Out of that second trial, really good to see Joyful Fortune perform the way that he did because when he's on song, he does look like a very exciting horse. And Naboo Attack might be a new horse to follow. He won five of his seven starts when he raced in Queensland in Australia and he got to the line really well in that trial. Let's look ahead, though, to what's coming up this weekend and over the next couple of meetings in Hong Kong. Saturday racing at Shanghai. 10 coming up a 10 race program. It's a triple head of racing at Sha Tin. A mixed meeting coming up on Wednesday night and then the following Sunday we're back at Sha Tin as well too. One race to look forward to coming up this weekend is the Class 2 over 1,650 metres. It's the highest class race. An interesting runner is congratulation from the Douglas White Stable. Yeah, look, he, he had some time, uh, some time off. He went to Chung Fa, um, freshened him up. Uh, he had a, a lovely trial 10 days ago and um, he's indicated to me that he, he, he enjoys the surface. So is that why you've picked out this race for him? Oh, there, there, there's very few races for a horse with his handicap, but um, it was one of the reasons. He seems to have trialled well in them. He works well with me on in the mornings. Um, so that was, that was the main reason and there's very few of these, uh, these dirt races with that particular rating. As far as racing here is concerned, he probably had a rush preparation towards the derby. We know these European horses take a bit of time, but is he starting to head in the right direction? He is now. He, 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 was, he was a month to six weeks behind from the word go, so he was always playing catch-up, and I thought his first run, he ran with uh, a lot of promise. Um, he ran around and amongst some decent horses, and um, he, he was still attacking the line, so he's a nice enough horse. He's, uh, he's got the form behind him from, from overseas that he's brought with him. So um, it's just all about him taking a little bit longer to settle in and, and acclimatise and uh, just get used to the ins and outs of Hong Kong. Just looking back at the weekend, Russian Emperor, how did he pull up Douglas? He pulled up fine. Um, I think, you know, uh, it, it, the, the race in itself, you possibly put a line through it. it. It was run at a very sedate gallop, three, two and a half or three seconds slower than standard. and. Um, I, I just I, I thought he was vulnerable from from where he was. Do you press on to the champions and chatter with him? We'll see how he pulls up. He'll, he'll have his first canter tomorrow and an easy gallop next week. Should everything be fine, we'll head in that direction. And congratulations. It's been a good night at the office for you. How do you feel the stable's going three quarters of the way through the season, Douglas? Um, I'm happy. Um, you know, uh, we obviously had a, a lean spell for, for six weeks. I think everyone goes through that. Casper's been through it. But um, in, in that lean spell, I had, I think, 25 seconds. So um, the horses were running well. It's, it's, it's um, just a little bit of luck. And the handicapping system doesn't allow you to get your head in front. Having said that, you know, they, they, they couldn't have been more competitive through that spell. So I'm um, just happy that they, they've brought that forward and they're continuing to run well. Douglas was celebrating a double when I spoke to him on Wednesday night at Happy Valley, but it got even better with a treble thanks to McLucky. So that was Douglas's first ever treble as a trainer. It was also a significant moment as well for Jerry Chow. This brought up a treble for him too, and he's now reduced his claim from £7 to £5. He's been in terrific form, and of course, Jerry is apprentice to Douglas. So the stable was having a terrific night at the Valley. That's it, though, for this edition of Hong Kong Direct. Thanks for watching. We're going to finish the show the way we started it with Chad Schofield and looking back at a memorable moment for him here in Hong Kong when he won the 2018 Classic Cup on Singapore Sling. Enjoy this and we'll see you at Sha Tin on Saturday. Nothing I like more was slow. Slowest out actually, nothing I like more. He's back last early. The Golden Age came out running. Singapore Sling stepped beautifully. More than lucky, Grand Chancellor and Riven pressing forward wider out. Then Beauty Miles from Ratton. 
Goldfield. Exultant's back fourth last from Dr. Jeff. Nothing I like more's found the rally. Second last inside of Rivet. Eight lengths top to bottom and the Golden Age takes the front position as most expected. Riven's three deep, but he's working to second on the outside of Grand Chancellor, who'll ease back and let him find that spot. Singapore Sling tracking lovely in fourth position down on the rail. Two lengths further back to More Than Lucky, who's on the inside of Beauty Miles and then Exultant. Three deep gold field from Ratton. Nothing I like more. Third last the favourite on the inside of Rivet and Dr. Jeff is last of all. The Golden Age is trotting along on the lead as they sweep down the side at the 800. The Golden Age by two lengths. Riven's now gone to a clear-cut second. Two further back, Singapore Slings had a lovely run, followed then by a Grand Chancellor who's fourth. Beauty Miles is covering ground. More than lucky, Exultant's very close midfield. Nothing I like more. Marrera's getting onto the back of Purton. He's going to have to ride for luck. He's in a little bit of dire straits here. Ratton, Goldfield, Rivet, and Dr. Jeff. The Golden Age swinged into the stretch with a length advantage over Riven. Singapore Sling, nothing I like more. Picking up speed down near the rail with Ratton. Then Exultant further out. It's still the Golden Age. Singapore Sling, he wants vengeance for defeat in the club. Classic mile, race to a narrow lead from the Golden Age. Then Exultant, nothing I like more, can't win. But Singapore Sling careering away with the Classic Cup. Singapore Sling.